Harbor Freight has officially launched a fixture table kit. And this is a 36 by 24, so it's you know three feet by two feet. And the price point makes it super competitive in the market as it sits right now. I'm told this table is gonna come in at under 200 bucks, and that's pretty good considering the fact that it comes with the tooling, is some, which is something I definitely did not expect. And so it's got a whole bunch of various fixtures that are made to be able to lay tube on top of, act as like a bump stop as you build. And some of this stuff I just need to play with to figure out exactly how it's supposed to be used. But it is made to be a tabletop unit, unit and it has little feet for that. Or you can do what we're gonna do. You can build out the full stand and this is gonna end up being an extra satellite table that I'd like to put on casters um, while I have a big fixture table over here in the corner. Personally, I like to put casters on everything that I can. It's really nice to be able to roll things around the shop. I mean, my two benders, my shop press, I've got tons of stuff on casters to roll it around to wherever it is that I'm working. I don't see this fixture table as a workbench, but I absolutely see its value as being like a satellite table that you just kind of roll around and use when you need it. Unfortunately, my local Harbor Freight did not have like the right size stud out of the top of one of their casters in order to just like thread it right into where these feet are supposed to go. But by just drilling out the hole and kind of banging it in there a little bit, I was totally able to make something work. And now it's got casters and now it's mobile. Here's how this is supposed to work. You set up a whole bunch of these little accessories in a way that you can easily index parts and easily clamp parts. And there's a few huge benefits to this. One would be that obviously when you can clamp something down in multiple spots and then you weld it, because it's holding it nice and solid instead of it just being flopping around like a normal workbench, it makes it to where there's gonna be a little bit less distortion for sure. I mean, you'll never eliminate distortion completely from welding because you're like getting things lava hot and then allowing them to cool. But you can definitely reduce the, the you're gonna be able to reduce turning things into a banana if you don't want to. Um, but on top of that, this makes it extremely fast to do repeatable joints. And I think for, I think that this is really underrated as, as being a, a reason to have a fabrication uh, or a fixture table like this. If you're building a gate or a fence or something where you might be, you might have to just join like 12 of the exact same two pieces together over and over and over. You can set these up in a way that they're a backstop. So we can slide this piece of material. Let's say we need like 18 inch by three foot welded over and over and over. We need to make 12 of them. The fact that I can just slide one in here, slide one in there, you know, clamp it, weld it, move on. It's going to speed up that workflow so much. Now you might be thinking, well, Nate, that's a really small table to be able to do that with. This is just one of the tables. This, there's a reason I have five of them. It's because this is going to be a satellite table that I move around the shop. And this is going to be awesome in the fact that I just recently started TIG welding a lot more, especially with aluminum. I hate the fact that I can't use magnets on aluminum. I've been working with steel for so long and I've been able to get away without having a fab table because I just line things up with magnets and I go. But with this, I can clamp things down in a way with aluminum projects that it's gonna just be hugely beneficial. The other four tabletops are gonna be for a big table that I'm gonna locate back in the corner of the shop that's gonna be the same size as this. I wanna stress that there's a big difference between a workbench and a fab table. If you are planning on like doing acts like regearing axles, like doing the heavy stuff, like where you're, you're going to be setting heavy stuff on a table like this, I would definitely recommend getting a thicker table to where if you drop that axle on it a little bit too hard with your cherry picker, it's not going to destroy the table. Whereas with something like this, this is three sixteenths of an inch thick. This is not going to take very much to bend and distort the holes. A really good example of that is these clamps. I have one right here. The clamps that come with this table, comes with four of them, which is pretty cool for the price. But this has a nut to back it, whereas it, higher end tables, you'll notice that it's just like a 5 8 rod that you just put in the hole. It's super fast, you can clamp because basically once you start clamping, it puts side load onto the table and it locks it in place. With something this thin, I wouldn't want to do that just because it'd be so easy with 3 16 to bend and distort those holes. And then eventually you're gonna really start to get this thing out of whack. So you need to treat it like a fab table and you can't treat it like a $10,000 fab table. If you need something that's extremely flat, extremely durable, 
and extremely you know precise and all that stuff because of the industry you're in you're just gonna have to pony up the extra money but for a lot of us i think that this is a great way to go because i'm i mean if i destroy this thing over five years of hard use it was 169 bucks i'm just not as worried about like conditioning it in the same way also imagine if you spend 10k on a really nice eight foot long fab table and you're using an angle grinder on it and you gouge that big flat surface that you paid all that extra money to have precision top and now you're like you're gonna occasionally have issues where you do that i think there's a lot of value in buying something that's a little less expensive because you're just not as worried about destroying it also one more thing to think about when you're looking at a more expensive table with a surface you're trying to take good uh, good good care of if you want if you plan on grounding through the table to weld i mean this is really nice but there's those of you that have done a lot of like welding like I have, you know that sometimes if you just lay stuff on a piece of steel and you try to weld it, it won't necessarily have the best ground and it'll just like arc. If you're trying to take really good care of a really nice table and again, you wanna take care of that surface finish, you just can't do those same kinds of things. You're gonna have to continue to ground right to the piece. Not a big deal, but it's something to think about. You're gonna be treating a $10,000 table like a $10,000 table and there is, I think, a lot of benefit to having something that's a little bit less expensive. Plus, it comes with so many accessories that when you buy five of these, I've got a boatload of these now, which is gonna be really nice for all the different projects that I have planned where I'm gonna be clamping down really long pieces of material. Now that I've expressed my concerns with a table that's only 3 16ths of an inch thick, how thick is your average table? Well, I can't really find an average. I think the thickest that I've seen is one inch. There are definitely a lot of tables that are half inch. And then of the cheaper ones, it seems like three sixteenths and quarter is very common. So the thickness varies a lot. <laughs> as far as what is required to do the job, I think that it's gonna be very uh, industry specific and then very specific to your budget on top of all that because obviously the thicker the material the larger the cost I can think of multiple ways that you could bolt these or even weld these together but I don't know if you would want to or need to in my instance I want to take advantage of a bunch of inexpensive fab tables that come with a bunch of tooling and try to build a big flat table out of them um, I could also just go to the steel yard and I could get a chunk of half inch, a really big chunk of half inch, like a full sheet, and then I could drill 600 of my own holes. But in the interest of time and cost and uh, everything else, I want to experiment with bolting a bunch of these together, as I'm sure when many of you would look at the dimensions of the table as the way it comes, or probably thinking how you can massage it to fit the best dimensions for whatever it is that you build. I'm using my four foot level as a straight edge and some spots like right there, not bad. Like I can barely see a gap. But I had a feeling when I unboxed this, just by looking at the way everything is like designed, how it like it bolts down into, into this clearly very, very quickly welded frame. I had a feeling that anywhere there was gonna be bolts, we might see some weird warping and stuff because again, it's only 3 16 top. If this was half inch thick, it would be really hard to bend it, right? Whereas when it's only 3 16 of an inch thick, right here, there's two bolts right here. And what do you know? There's like a crazy low spot where those two bolts are. So it's not very flat when it's bolted to a warped frame. Who to thunk it? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbolt this from the frame and then we're gonna recheck flatness because I just, I'm just guessing but I think that once there's no tension into a warped piece of steel, it's probably gonna level out. And then I gotta decide how I want to mount these tops onto 
uh, onto this frame that I just built. That is so much better. Right where these two bolt holes are, it just dove down, um, which says a few things. This might be tightened up just a hair too tight, but it's also being tightened up to a frame that is not very straight. The ironic part is that if the people who built all these frames would have used a fixture table to tighten everything before they welded it, <laughs> it probably wouldn't be so warped. But in any case, we now see that the flatness of the table is a fixable problem. It wasn't crazy bad before. Uh, it's not like I couldn't work on it right. But I do like seeing that we could achieve a higher degree of flatness and a higher degree of accuracy just by loosening everything up. And that means that later on down the line, I might go through and take the time to shim underneath some of these holes before I tighten it back down, just to make sure that we can get as flat of a table as possible. Because this is, this looks so flat from like every angle now. There's only a couple spots where I see it might dive down, but it's just, it's just a tiny, tiny fraction of an inch. Anyway, so what the plan now, what the plan is now, is I am going to bolt through this factory frame for a couple of reasons. One, convenience. I don't wanna spend all weekend building the table. I wanna blast this out in just a few hours of work. And two, I wanted to have a big heavy duty frame that later on down the line, if I chose to buy other, like I wanted this to be expandable. So for this stage of the evolution of this roll around fab table, what I think I'm gonna do is we're gonna use a transfer punch. We're gonna transfer these holes in an accurate way down into our quarter inch, three sixteenths, three sixteenths, three sixteenths inch thick material. Then we can uh, tap it for the factory size hardware. We can reuse all this factory size hardware. That's gonna make this a lot cheaper project for us than having to rebuy all this stuff. And then we're just gonna go down the line and then we can talk about what the finished product looks like and also like why I chose to design the table the way I did. For those of you that are interested in doing something similar to this, like stacking a couple of these tables together, a little hack that I discovered was that if you throw some of the washers that came like with the hardware for these tables, if you just kind of like suspend them in some way, I use zip ties in this instance, but you can use those as a way to like give yourself the perfect gap to where you retain that two inch spacing between the holes if you place it in between the surfaces. As soon as I discovered this, I was like, oh sweet, we have like a placeholder it's gonna make it a lot easier to get everything fit up the way I want it. Nice big flat-ish table. <laughs> so how did we do? Well, my ruler, or my, not my ruler, my four foot level tells me that we are not exactly perfect, but it's honestly a lot better than I would have expected. I mean, you know, like there's certain spots like right here, like this is, this feels like perfect from side to side, but then if I come out towards the edge, I can feel it catch just a little bit right there. So if I wanted to make this like perfectly flat, I could definitely clamp that down to where the surfaces are the same height and then put like a one inch weld. But I gotta be honest with you, I don't see, I don't see flatness being an issue. I, I mean, if, if flatness is standing in my way as a fabricator, um, especially when it's already this flat, I think that it's me, not the table. Um, but we'll see, I'm gonna keep everybody updated. Like, is this going to bend and contort over time with like tons of welding hot stuff on it? If it does, I'll let you know along the way. I do love the fact that this came with so many parts and pieces. I mean, these accessories are gonna be so valuable with all the projects I have coming up over the next year. I mean, we're gonna be building a frame from scratch. Where, like, It's gonna be so nice to have a giant fab table like this. And it's such a small investment initially that if this tabletop doesn't even last a year, well, I've already got the bottom part. I can unbolt this, I can go to the steel yard, I can get a four by eight sheet of three eighths or half or something huge like that, plop it on there and then drill a billion holes. This is, this is an attempt to avoid all of that labor because this all went together in half a day. This is not a lot of work. Also, I should probably talk about this because I don't think I've talked about this yet. My buddy Franz came up with this idea and I thought it was so brilliant, the idea of having like receiver hitches mounted all the way around. 
And as I grow into and expand this table, I'll probably add like another piece of two and a half inch steel there to add to be like a, re a re hitch receiver in the middle because I have a bunch of tools that I'd love to get out of this cabinet and put on mounts and then slide into that hitch receiver. So the whole idea, of course, is to build a table to get started, use it a bunch, and then decide how I want to improve it. I can't believe I didn't think of this. I, I did all this in one day. So I I've been very focused on pr production and I just can't believe I didn't consider <laughs> These being the same height and how valuable that would be. Anyway, for your average Joe, do you need an eight foot by three foot table? I, absolutely not. Like this is really cool and I'm, I'm gonna be happy to have it. I mean, it takes up a ton of space. I'm gonna remove that uh, truck. I'm gonna pull that out and park it outside. And this is gonna permanently be just a secondary table over there for fab only. I think for your average Joe looking for a workbench, I think this probably isn't it because when you think about what you do with the workbench, you do so much more than fabrication and building. If you're doing stereo installs or like a roof rack with a whole bunch of hardware or you fill in the blank, there's so, I mean sliders, there's tons of stuff that if you open up the boxes and scatter the hardware or even try to just put piles of hardware, you're just gonna be losing. It's kind of your nightmare to have a table with a bunch of holes in it. But for an auxiliary table that just sits in the side of your shop until it is needed. I think that your average Joe watching this video with a two car garage or a one car garage that needs a way to clamp things safely, but also save space. I think that two of these set up on casters is kind of the sweet spot because you could easily create a way to quickly bolt them together. Then you have a three foot by four foot surface. You've got all the, you know, you have two tables worth of all the accessories. You could build a lot with that setup. Then if it's in the way, you could easily unbolt it. You can slide these over to the corner of your garage side by side and you're all good to go. As I'm talking, I am realizing though, if you did want to use this as a workbench, you could totally just use a flat piece of steel or aluminum or wood or whatever, put that over the top of it, right? You could use five eighths, if it's wood, you could use five eighths, just wooden dowels. This is, these are five eighths holes and it would just snap right into place. If you wanted to use steel, same thing, five eighths steel. So now that I'm thinking about it, you could totally make this into a workbench. But what I am saying is that if you haven't thought all the way, all that, all the way out, you just need to consider the fact that most of the stuff that you're going to be doing in the shop is going to require a flat surface that uh, doesn't have, you know, 200 holes in it. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed the video. I did this all in one day. So if I can do it this fast and I can, you know, build all these. Obviously, it's a pretty easy kit to put together, and I hope that uh, you got some value out of the video. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.